The sigils of the Ars Goetia are a set of mystical symbols used to summon, control, or communicate with the demons listed in the first book of the Lesser Key of Solomon. The text catalogs 72 demons, each with a unique sigil that represents their name, rank, and powers within the infernal hierarchy. The Ars Goetia is part of a larger tradition of grimoires, which are medieval books of magic that provide detailed instructions on how to summon and control spirits. The origins of this text itself are shrouded in mystery, but it's believed to have been compiled in the 17th century, drawing from earlier texts and traditions that date back to the Middle Ages. Each sigil in the Ars Goetia is a unique graphic signature associated with a particular demon. The process of creating these sigils, known as sigilization, involves transforming the letters of a demon's name into a complex, abstract symbol. We talk about this process in our video on how to create a sigil, so check that out for more information. By doing this, the practitioner is basically trying to distill the demon's essence into a form that can be easily used in magical rituals. The Ars Goetian sigils are typically enclosed in a circle, the circle represents completeness and unity, but it also serves as a protective barrier that contains the invoked force, preventing it from escaping and causing harm to the magician or those nearby. This containment is crucial, as demons are often viewed as unpredictable and potentially malevolent forces. The use of the circle ensures that the summoner maintains control over the demon during the ritual. The appearance of each sigil in the Ars Goetia is distinct featuring a variety of geometric elements such as crosses, stars, loops, crescents, and other esoteric symbols. These shapes are not chosen randomly. Each design element is believed to correspond to specific qualities or powers of the demon it represents. For example, a sigil with sharp angular lines such as that of Andras might suggest aggression, strength, or warlike qualities, reflecting the demon's fearsome nature. Conversely, a sigil with more fluid, intricate lines could indicate wisdom, cunning, or arcane knowledge, traits often associated with demons who are sought for their guidance or secretive insight. A good example of this is the Sigil of Paimon. It features flowing lines and gentle curves, reflective of Paimon's attributes of cunning and his ability to manipulate knowledge. The combination of the geometric shapes and lines of these sigils captures the specific powers, traits, and influences of each demon. This turns the sigils into powerful tools for invoking or commanding these entities, as each sigil acts as a kind of magical key that unlocks the demon's unique energies. In ceremonial magic, the sigils of the Ars Goetia are used to invoke the presence of demons often for purposes such as acquiring knowledge, gaining power, or achieving specific personal goals. These rituals are typically elaborate, involving detailed instructions for the preparation and conduct of the summoning. The magician might inscribe the sigil on parchment, draw it on a surface, or engrave it onto a ritual tool, such as a wand or dagger. The sigil serves as a focal point for the ritual, channeling the demon's energy and establishing a connection between the physical and spiritual realms. The sigils of the Ars Goetia have fascinated occultists, magicians, and scholars for centuries. Throughout history, these sigils have been used by those seeking knowledge, power, or spiritual insight. In modern times, the sigils of the Ars Goetia continue to be studied and used in various occult practices, from ceremonial magic to chaos magic and modern witchcraft. Today, the sigils are viewed not only as tools for summoning demons, but also as symbols of personal transformation and psychological exploration. Some modern practitioners interpret the demons and their sigils not as literal entities, but as aspects of the human psyche, representing various fears, desires, and hidden potential. In this context, the sigils become a means of self-reflection and inner work, helping practitioners explore their subconscious minds and achieve greater self-awareness. What do you think? Are the sigils simply symbolic or do they have inherent power? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support our channel. Thanks for watching.